Welcome to Andy's How I Did It channel. Today we're going to take a look at how I upgraded the gears in an easy go golf cart from a 12.44 ratio to a 6.1 on a Dana rear end. I've already upgraded the motor, controller, and the voltage while making videos that you can see on my channel. This was by far the most comprehensive install I've ever done. Before you start criticizing me, I'm not a mechanic and this isn't what I do full time. So feel free to leave some constructive feedback for others that might help with the install. This isn't a terribly hard thing to do, but I've never seen it done before and I had to work through a lot of the process myself. You'll see some things that I tried that didn't work and you'll see what ultimately did work. In the end, I'm going to show you exactly what the gear upgrade did for the speed of the golf cart. I put some links below to the parts I needed to complete this upgrade. It really helps me out if you order from those links. So let's get started. Suffice it to say, we've kind of skipped past the jacking it up and taking the tires off, putting chocks under. But if you're at the point where you're not sure about how to do that, this might not be the project for you. So we're going to jump into the first thing you saw me do is take that pan out so that I could get the castle nut off that's holding the cover over the brake drums. And next, I've got a pair of snap ring pliers that are just absolute garbage. These are the ones with the head that's interchangeable. You really need a decent pair because this is a pretty tough ring to actually extract out of there. You want to get that snap ring out and you can see I've just got the edge of it out there. I'm going to use a screwdriver to flip the rest of it out. Once I've done that, I'm going to be able to pull out the shaft from and the washer comes out with it, but I'm going to be able to pull the shaft out from inside the differential that's in the back end. So I've gone ahead and I saw one of the tricks was to take the drum, put it on backwards and put the castle nut back on to help you extract it. You'll find out pretty quickly that on the other side, I didn't actually even need to do that. And I really didn't need to do it on this side either. Mine just kind of popped right out. The seals are still good. Everything still looks good inside of there. Um, but it just wasn't that stuck. So I was able to extract it with very minimal effort. Make sure that once you get it out, you protect that shaft from dirt and grime and grease because you really don't want that going back into your axle. Now that that's out, we're gonna jump over to the other side. I'm going to remove this cotter pin by bending the outside edges out, pull it out, Use an impact wrench with a, I think, 15, 16 cent socket to extract the nut off the outside of it, pull the brake drum off, and then go ahead and use some snap ring pliers to, again, get this snap ring off. And then you can see here that I just pull that out by hand. It's really not that bad. Next up, we're gonna go down underneath the cart where I'm going to remove all the bolts that hold in this differential drip, uh, drain pan that's underneath the cart. I did not drain the oil out of the pan first. I thought maybe I could get it off um, without having to drain it and just hold it in one piece because I knew the oil only goes up to that drain bolt. And I thought, well, maybe there's not a whole lot in there and it would be not too bad to get it off. I used a, like a paint scraper to unseal the gasket. And you could see there that as I was trying to get it unstuck, I ended up making a mess with the gear oil. So it's a better idea to drain that first if you can. It's a little more difficult than you would think to try and save that while you unstick that gasket. So I'm gonna take an impact wrench here and I'm gonna take these bolts out to get this lower end of the differential out. Note that you have to pull those two shafts out before you can pull out this big gear in this part of the differential because if you don't, then it won't just slide out the bottom. So you definitely have to get the two axles out first. Take these four bolts out with these holders and then once you get down to the last of the four bolts, you can start to do it going back and forth, sliding just a little bit, and you'll eventually get it loosened to where you can just grab the gear. It is fairly heavy, and if you don't take the whole transaxle out of the bottom of the golf cart, and by that, I mean if you don't take the entire rear end out of the golf cart and flip it upside down, you're going to need some extra help in there to hold this gear as you unscrew it. We come over to this dust cover and this thing was a lot tougher than I ever thought it was going to be. I had a mechanic friend on the phone who was helping me out with this. Uh, I tried to get it out by prying it out for far too long. The easiest method here is just to drill a hole into it. You can drill it in the center if you want. That way you're not going to compromise any of the bearings that are on the inside. But you'll likely need to order a new set of bearings and a new cover for this side and the other side. You can see here that I just drilled a hole and then I used a machine screw to start it in and then the, the cover popped right off. And once again, we're back to snap rings. You've got to get the snap ring out in order to get the bearings out and slide the shaft over. And you can see this time, I actually went with an upgraded pair of snap ring pliers. I still don't have a really good pair. This one worked a little bit better for me to be able to get it out. I struggled with it a lot. It's not the easiest thing even with the lifted golf cart. Once I did that, that intermediate gear, that's in there, I started working it from the inside to push the shaft over. 
which in turn led those ball bearings to pop out and allowed me to move that intermediate gear around freely. Unfortunately, you cannot do this without taking off that motor. There's no way. You have to unbolt the motor from the other side, pop the other freeze plug cover off to get it out, and then you can get the, the intermediate gear out so that you can start working on it. I had just put this motor on. In fact, I made a video on how to upgrade the motor with this D&D motor that I ordered. It was a high torque motor. And the last thing I really wanted to do is pull this thing back off again. I used a, a jack with this two by six over the axle so that I could slide the motor off the shaft without having to completely unwire the rest of the motor. So once I got it slid off, it moved over sideways just enough to where I could get to that freeze plug on the other side. Once I did that, I used one hand to hold that gear up inside. I used a hammer and a 10 inch long 3 8 inch extension bar to hammer against the intermediate shaft so that you can knock the freeze plug out on the other side. So once I got the freeze plug out, the snap ring is still in there. You'll still need to remove that unless you try and get the bearings in from the inside, but it's much easier if you remove that snap ring as well. There are O-rings inside there that you need to make sure are safe and clean before you replace the bearings. So next up, I used this two jaw puller to try and separate the gear, the intermediate gear for the new gear that I needed to put on. I bent the two jaw puller. It is not strong enough to be able to do this. Granted, I may not have been doing it the right way. So I went to Harbor Freight and picked up a gear press and this made this job immensely easier. So I put the gear down on the plates and I used the jack. It was actually a six ton gear press. I used the jack to push that shaft outside of that gear. And there you can see it. There is a set pin of sorts inside there that hold the gear orientation to the shaft so that it doesn't spin on you. I found later that, and I'll show you that process later, but I found that I was able to take that out and not use it. You will have to replace the large gear that's on the lower part of the differential as well. This is a fairly easy process. I believe these nuts are lock nuts. So they were a little bit more difficult for me to loosen. I used a 14 millimeter socket on one side to start to loosen those nuts up. And then I used a closed in wrench on the other side, having to slide that out as I slid the butt nut and bolt out. So I'm taking these off. The new gear that slides on here is not as large as the gear that I'm pulling off because we're dropping down in ratio from 1244 to 61. So you can see that I pull those off. And once I finally get all the nuts off, I'm able to slide the new smaller gear on to that differential shaft. Um, it slides off pretty easy, but the new one is actually a very snug fit when you slide it down over the differential. I wanna line this up exactly like how I pulled it out obviously with the four holes uh, lined up over each other so I don't have to reorient that portion of it later. I'm gonna put those bolts back in and put the nuts back on. And when I do that, I'm going to torque them to 40 PSI because I've read that that is the correct torque to tighten the bolts down to. But I'll start with an impact wrench to get them snug first and then go down to 40 PSI after that to make this job a little bit easier. These EasyGo golf cart high speed gears are for 1988 and up electric and two cycle motors. And the 6-1 ratio is the fastest gear set you can buy. These gears will lower the amount of torque you used to have simply because of the ratio. A lot of the gears come from Apache gears in Arizona, but I ordered these through Amazon and I'll throw a link down in the description below. The gears come in 6-1, 8-1, and 15-1 if you decide you want more torque. The bulk of the driving we do is on flat surfaces, so torque and hills aren't necessarily a problem for us around here, and speed was the biggest concern. So I wiped off the assembly and then took the new bearings that I had ordered. I, I did order uh, a bearing kit that came out of Jacksonville. It had the freeze plugs with it, as well as new bearings for the shafts and for all of the gears that were on there. This is another area where I knew I needed to clean this bottom pan and I started using a chisel to kind of scrape that gasket seal off. That didn't work. I used cleaner to try and clean it as well. Again, that didn't work. The thing that ended up working well for me was a wire brush on the end of a drill. So I used that wire brush to clean this thing up really good. And you can see that it turned out really nice 
once I was done and cleaned it up really well. So next, I'm gonna take my press and I put the gear in with the new gear that I wanted on there. Unfortunately, the plates that were holding it down at the bottom were a little too close to allow the shaft to slide through as I was using the jack to push it down, so it popped out when I did it. As my dad always said, hindsight is 20-20. Once I figured out what happened, I went ahead and completed the bearing press process. Again, this six ton press worked out really well. I didn't have any issues with the amount of power that it provided for this install. Next, I'm gonna take this intermediate shaft and slide it into the holes where the freeze plugs came from. I can tell you unequivocally, the snap ring has to come out from the other side with the motor. You're gonna take that bearing and you're gonna put it in on each side, but you really need two people to help with this process because it's almost impossible to hold that gear up, line it up, put the bearings on, and then hammer the bearings in over the shaft all at the same time without three hands. So that makes it really helpful. I was able to put the snap ring in on the other side after I got the bearing slid in. Once I did that, I was just using an extension to push the shaft in as far as possible. Before I took the bearing race and seal bushing driver install set, I'm gonna link to that down below. I just picked that up off of Amazon. It was 30 bucks because I didn't have one. And it gives you the right size head to be able to push those bearings in into place and you can see here that I'm hammering that one bearing in on the motor side that one and actually both bearings kind of stick into the housing a little bit and then you'll fit the snap ring in once you get those bearings in go ahead and put the snap ring in and then put the new freeze plugs on that you ordered as well I got those off of eBay along with that bearing kit and you can use a dead blow hammer or maybe an extension to make sure that you make a good seal with those once you put them on to seal up the intermediate shaft. I'm doing the same thing on the other side, pushing those bearings in as much as possible uh, around that seal. Once I've got that done, I put the freeze plug back on and then I'm going to manipulate that new motor back onto the spline that it sits on. So I had to, again, take that motor off and put it to the side. Once I was done with that, I did not do anything with the top gear and the spline that the motor sits on, but I was able to jack the motor up slightly with that two by six that I had made, get it lined up and put it on. And then once you do that, you're just gonna put those three bolts back in that bolt that motor into the transaxle. So there's one on the back side, there's one on the top side, and there's one on the front side. And you can see all three. I can link to the video where I did this motor upgrade before. That was a fairly easy process, but that motor is very long and it weighs over 50 pounds. And if you can avoid lifting it up and down by yourself, you're gonna do yourself some favors for your back and your arms and your legs. We go ahead and once you get that motor lined up, get those bolts lined back up, tighten them each individually. While I was down here, I noticed that the six inch lift kit that I had installed some years ago had become loose. So I went ahead and tightened those bolts back up. And then of course I mentioned this wire brush earlier. It was one of the easiest ways for me to clean off the bottom of this transaxle so that I could get all that old gasket off. And lastly, while this is looks up, I mean, it is upside down. I'm actually holding this bottom gear in that I've already done. I'm holding this piece in and I'm putting the four bolts and the two brackets back on on each side as this thing tries to fall out on me. Again, this is torqued to 40 PSI as well. So I'm just using a small impact wrench to get those bolts tight while I'm using my other hand to hold it in place. And there is the torque wrench to get the bolts tightened down to 40 PSI. So lastly, I'm going to take these axles and I'm gonna slide them back into their housing. They fit back in really snugly. I had to twist them just a smidge in order for them to fit all the way into that differential that's in the middle. Take those snap rings that have been the bane of my existence and get those back into place so that that axle doesn't fall out. Once you've done that, you can put that brake drum cover back on. I used a hammer to snug it on once I had it lined up. It's pretty easy, the, the grooves line up really well. Get that brake drum lined up and put back on. Once you've done that, you're gonna take your castle nut, you're gonna put that back on, and you have to remember that you still need to slide your cotter pin in on it so you don't need to go super tight on it, but slide your cotter pin on it once it's lined up and then bend the ends of the cotter pin back out. I didn't order a new cotter pin, I just reused the same one that I had before. But make sure that you put that washer on the inside of the castle nut that belongs there as well. We're gonna jump over to the other side and zoom through this very quickly because it was a pretty easy process as well. You can see me putting the washer on and then sliding that snap ring back into the grooves and making sure that it's set in position. 
go ahead and put that drum cover back on as well. This one slid on a little bit easier. I still needed a hammer to really get it on there. And once I did that, reinstall that castle nut and the cotter pin on this side as well. There is another washer, obviously, that's on the outside of that drum that you wanna make sure that you have on. Put that on, tighten it just a little bit, and then put that cotter pin back on so that everything is set back in place. Finally, we're gonna move on to the bottom of this differential. So we're gonna take the differential cover and I'm gonna put some new gasket seal on. I'm gonna to link to some of that down below if you don't have that already. There's no reason for me to drag out this entire process. I do circle every single one of the bolt holes as I go around, get this gasket seal on there. I'm gonna take some 75140 gear oil and I'm gonna fill it up. You can see that brass plug just on the other side. I'm gonna go just to the bottom of that brass plug because that's all the gear oil that's actually in there. I take it slowly and line it up back over the holes in the same orientation where it came out of where the plug is facing the passenger side. And then I'm gonna take those bolts and what I learned is go ahead and snug all those up by hand. First, I, I get enough in there just to hold the pan up by itself, but I wanna get those all snugged up by hand. I'm just hand tightening again with an impact wrench socket and extension arm on all of them so that the gasket seal can dry. I'm going to, once I get all those tight, I'm gonna leave it for about an hour to pick up that seal and then finish tightening it. I'll come back later after the silicone has firmed up a bit and then we'll be able to retighten all of the bolts down and cut away the excess silicone on the edges. But now I can go ahead and reinstall those tires. One thing that I did out of order because this did take me quite a bit of time was I had jacked up the cart and then I put those jack stands underneath it after I'd taken the tires off. So I started putting the tires on and I couldn't figure out why they didn't sit right. And I thought maybe I did something wrong, but it just turns out that the jack stands were in the way. So I got the jack back under there and took the jack stands back out during this process so that I could finish getting the tires on without any encumbrances like a jack stand blocking um, the inside of it. There's not a whole lot of room to put a bunch of jack stands and and a jack underneath there. So I took that out. We're fine now. The tires went back on just like expected. I was very curious to see what this, how this was going to work. And as I spun the tire, the other tire spun backwards. I wanted to make sure everything was good. So I went ahead and took an impact wrench and tightened up each one of these bolts all the way around to make sure that we had a good seal all the way around the lower end of that differential. Lastly, I lowered it down and then we hit the road to go see what this gear upgrade would do for us. We use this cart a lot around the neighborhood and, and took a quick spin over to Publix with a speedometer so we could see how fast it was going. And as you can see, this gear upgrade had taken me from about 21 miles an hour with an upgraded D&D &D motor on on the back of it to a consistent 29 and 30 miles an hour on the sidewalk. And I'm sure it would do just as fast. It goes a little bit faster going down hills, but suffice it to say, I'm very happy with the performance after the gear upgrade. It significantly boosted the speed and it ended up being not as big of a project as I thought it was gonna be. So if you have any questions, throw those down in the comments below. This is a significant upgrade for your cart if you have the time to do it. There's a few tools that you'll need and obviously the parts about 350, 400 bucks to pick up for the actual gear upgrade, but totally worth it in the end. I have done a lot of these how I did it type videos on different aspects of golf carts, including controllers and voltage upgrades. And most recently the motor upgrade, I have a couple more videos coming out on some lighting and some other things that I've done. So if you haven't yet, please click that subscribe and like button. It really helps me out. Be sure to check out some of these other upgrade videos if you haven't seen them yet. Hope you guys have a good day and we'll catch you on the next video.